Hello, this is Romeo Cat Computers, and I have once again made improvements to my AM transmitter circuit. And so, we have 2-pin crystal AM transmitter part 5, and it's all contained within this box right here. Now, this is based on the system that I used as early as part 2, where I made slight improvements to the very basic and somehow functional AM circuit that I created. In this variation, I've added a few improvements. Mainly, I've finally added some amplification stages. Uh, I've added two of this type here on screen uh, that a friend sent to me a while back, and he said that it would be good for my type of circuit. And indeed, it does add great improvements to the signal strength and range. I've also added a bandpass filter, as seen here, and it doesn't seem to do a whole lot, but then if I remove it, it makes the signal worse, so I don't really know, so I kept it in. Um, unfortunately, I still haven't figured out an audio amplifier for the incoming signal, so even though the signal strength may be good, uh, I still usually have to turn the volume up on my Sony receiver, which we'll be using in a little bit. Now here's the complete circuit schematic everything, the base circuit, and the amplification stages, and the bandpass filter thrown in there. Now I do want to make it clear that I am pretty beginner with basic understanding when it comes to a lot of this stuff. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who know what they're doing that are probably banging their heads on their desk about a lot of things. And there have been some in the past too. So please, if you know of any suggestions or improvements or anything I've done wrong or anything like that, please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to learn about better ways to do this. And in fact, that's what's been going on over the last two years of my uh, AM transmitter videos being out. I have had a few people come along and give me suggestions. One other improvement I suppose you could say that I've made is I've mounted it inside a metal box. This is a mint tin. If we open it up, we have everything in here. Now, I'm kind of using this as storage, so i got to pull some of this stuff out. And there we go. This is the AM transmitter. Now, it's very cramped in there. Uh, very cluttered, but I'll try to point things out. There, centered around the crystal, is the Culpitz oscillator. Up in this corner, we have... Uh, the AM modulator, where it takes the audio in from these connectors. Uh, these two transistors are the first amplification stage, and these two are the second. And the bandpass filters up there as well. This is a power input. It's got uh, center positive and then two grounds on either side. And as you can see, I have a ground that is soldered to the chassis. And then this connector down here is antenna out both with a signal and a ground. Up at the top we have a power switch which just controls the incoming power from the battery and an indicator LED that is connected to the power. And this is another one of my 9 volt circuits so I can easily find a battery and plug it in. And of course it also uses a standard headphone jack or line out audio. A headphone jack audio is sometimes a little quiet and so I usually like to plug it into a laptop or a computer that can put out a bit more audio. And if I turn it on here the LED will illuminate. It is transmitting now but it's not transmitting anything. This transmitter is designed for 4 megahertz. That's the crystal that I put in there. But because I wasn't able to suppress the harmonics, it also transmits on 16 MHz and 8 MHz, as well as some other harmonics. Oddly enough, the 8 MHz harmonic seems to come into my radio receiver a lot nicer than the 4, and so that's what I've been using to receive it. Uh, but it does work on 4 as well as 16. So anyway, let's get out on the field and see how far this thing goes. So this is Pioneer Park. It's a park just about a block or two away from my house. And some may remember this place for some of my other experiments. Oh, geez. Anyway, I have the transmitter running here with my 
piece of wire, vertically polarized. It's about seven and a half foot long, which if I did the math right, should be some sort of harmonic of four megahertz. And as we can see, it is transmitting. Right now we're playing original rags. So I'm going to start walking over there, see how far this goes. Here I've just made it to about the foot of this big field area. See if I get to the other side. Keep in mind it's right over there, right about where my bicycle is sitting. All right, I'm calling this about as far as it'll go. I'm way back over there. Doesn't help now that I'm standing right next to a substation. So I'm starting to get some noise. I'm gonna try from the other direction. I'm back at the transmitter. The iPhone has some feature where you can like point and tap and it'll measure a distance. So I measured on the way back and to just about over there where I was standing, it was about 159 feet or something. So that's pretty good. And now I'm this far away on this side and I'd say this is about as far as it'll go. Before I end it here, there is one thing I'd like to mention and that's audio distortion. It kind of depends on what I'm playing from song to song, uh, but a lot of the what comes out of this transmitter will randomly sound distorted, sometimes right off the bat, sometimes after a few minutes of use. And I found that grounding uh, certain parts of it will mitigate that, uh, but I'm not exactly sure what causes that. But there are quite a few pieces of audio that come out fine, and this is mainly for demonstration. I'm not really gonna use this practically, so I don't really care all that much. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this transmitter video. So I hope you enjoyed, and I thank you for watching.